If you're at all like me, you are a sucker for that retro aesthetic. Chunky knobs, a silver faceplate, wood sides, and of course, analog meters that glow. These are the things that get our motor running. And maybe like me, you spend your evening scouring eBay, looking at vintage hi-fi finds from yesteryear and wondering to yourself, how do they compare to today's components? While I will admit vintage hi-fi does offer a lot of bang for the buck, it often leaves a lot to be desired when it comes to reliability, not to mention some of these products are very hard to find and expensive if you can find them. So when I saw the Yamaha AS1200 integrated amplifier, I thought to myself, here we go. Vintage good looks, modern components with a warranty. The only question that remained was, does it sound any good? Well, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, because we're gonna find out. The AS1200 is a stereo integrated amplifier in Yamaha's vast lineup of hi-fi oriented products. It's not the brand's flagship integrated, that distinction falls to the AS3200. No, the 1200 is the baby brother to both the 3200 as well as the 2200. This 90 watt per channel integrated amplifier is aimed at a more mid-fi to maybe high-end customer. It's an investment type piece for sure because unlike a lot of popular do-everything integrateds that are on the market right now, the 1200 is far more analog and as a result should never be rendered obsolete. Stylistically, the Yamaha is a home run, especially in its silver finish. It also comes in black, but who are we kidding? The silver is where it's at, complete with its black lacquer side panels and just the vintage vibe it throws out for the same price. We're not even looking at the black option. Everything from the toggle switches to Yamaha's iconic bass, treble, and balance knobs is a nod to hi-fi history, and that, that attention to detail carries over beyond just its looks. Operating the 1200 via its manual controls feels good. There's an appropriate amount of resistance and weight to each of the controls that makes this integrated feel mechanical. Around back, the story is much the same as all of the input output options are first rate. There is no app for the S1200, just a good old fashioned remote. And the remote control is good. It's not unique to the 1200 and I would have preferred to see just a little bit of backlighting as some of the buttons are on the smaller side. But for a vintage inspired piece, it's nice that Yamaha did not go without some modern convenience. We use the 1200 as a centerpiece of both a two channel home theater as well as a straight hi-fi integrated amplifier. Now obviously the 1200 doesn't have any form of digital audio connectivity so in order to connect it to our LG 8K TV we used an HDMI to analog adapter. As for audio we did use the 1200 with two different streaming devices the Aurelic Altair G1 as well as the Aurelic S50 Pro. The Audio-Technica LP140XP with the Ortofon 2M black cartridge took care of all of our vinyl duties and speakers ran the gamut, though we primarily relied upon the Klipsch Heresy Mark IVs and Klipsch La Scalas. A complete list of all of our associated equipment will be found down below. To be honest, I had no idea what to expect when it came to the S1200. It has been... It's been a good minute since I've heard one of Yamaha's more hi-fi oriented products as I have far more experience with their home theater receivers than their more traditional two-channel fare. And that's on me because I've been missing out because the 1200, as it turns out, is something special. Straight away, the most captivating aspect of the 1200's performance is its ability to hang on to the finer details in music and present them with greater emphasis. This is especially true when it comes to its high frequency performance, which is just so sweet and delicate. Is there a mild emphasis on the treble through this amplifier? Yes. Yes, there is. But that don't mistake emphasis for harshness. High frequencies are articulate, nimble, very extended. So things like cymbal hits just have a little bit more surrounding air, a little more texture, and are rendered truer to the instrument itself. There's a real palpable and organic quality to this amplifier's high frequency presentation that honestly just isn't that common at this price point. But this clarity comes at a price. For example, if you're listening to an album that is prone to some high frequency compression or sibilance, take for instance Alanis Morissette's MTV Unplugged. The 1200's high frequency rendering isn't gonna do an album like this any 
favors, especially when paired with a more neutral or lean speaker like the Heresy Mark IV. To be clear, the highs don't become aggressive or fatiguing, but sibilance or compression is not going to be glossed over or smoothed out through this amplifier. The 1200's clarity extends to its mid-range, though I will concede that it is mildly lean or lighter in absolute weight. This in turn makes things feel a bit more live and gives instruments and vocals more in-room presence, which I like. I like a more live sound. I don't want forward or aggressive, and the S1200 isn't either of these things. That said, it doesn't really impart a lot of coloration to the mids, so while it may not be as weighty as, say, the Musical Fidelity M5SI, it's not overtly or artificially warm either. The best part is, is the mid-range and high-frequency performance of this amp complement each other beautifully, which always results in an engaging and oftentimes revealing experience. Bass notes are nimble and textural, though not as weighty as some, again referring back to the Musical Fidelity M5SI. Still, if you need more low-end grunt, you can always add a subwoofer to augment what the 1200 may not be able to ultimately provide on its own. Now, the 1200 doesn't have a subwoofer out per se, but it does have preamp outs, which can be used to send a signal to one or two subwoofers if you want. I tried the 1200 with three different subwoofers from the likes of RHEL, Yamo, and SVS, the latter of the two being the best fits for truly extending the 1200's reach down low. That said, and without commenting on either of the subwoofers' performance, the bass the 1200 is capable of inches towards greatness. I love the speed and attack this amp is capable of, and the bass that it does manage to extract from my loudspeaker's drivers, even if that bass isn't the deepest in the end. In terms of soundstage, the 1200 is fantastic. Next to its high frequency performance, its soundstage prowess is its next best trait. The focus found throughout the soundstage is so precise that a lot of other components can sound downright blurry in comparison. There's just so many layers to get lost in through this amplifier, so whether you like small acoustic sets or big orchestral works, you're not going to be let down by the Yamaha. Dynamically, the 1200 just slaps. While 90 watts per channel may not seem like a lot, given the fact that you can get double that or more for the same price through other integrated amplifiers, the power the 1200 has on tap is capable of driving the piss out of about 95% of loudspeakers on the market right now. And not just drive them, but control them in a way where dynamics are explosive but composed. A snare hit resonates the way a snare hit should. A bullet ricochet has the requisite explosiveness to be startling, even violent in the moment, without any of it feeling out of control. The Yamaha S1200 is not a neutral amplifier, though if you don't directly compare it to a competitive product, you likely won't notice. However, when pitted against the Musical Fidelity M5SI, it's not hard to notice the 1200's mild leanness. The M5SI is just fuller sounding, with better bass texture and extension in direct comparison to the 1200. This in turn does make for a mildly more grounded mid-range performance, though admittedly, the M5SI's high frequencies are more subdued, even rolled off by comparison. But if you listen to a lot of pop or rock music, or you have some less than stellar recordings in heavy rotation, the M5SI may be more forgiving of your musical taste than, say, the Yamaha, but, but not by much. The M5SI does have more power on tap, and it is noticeable when using speakers with sensitivities below, say, 90 dB, as was the case in our recent Q Acoustics and Fluence speaker reviews. When paired to our Klipsch loudspeakers, the power discrepancies between these two integrated isn't that noticeable. Both integrated amplifiers are beautiful and great performers, if not solid values in their own right. Now, compared to the name Unity Atom, the Atom is more of a complete music system, whereas the 1200 is a traditional integrated amplifier. So built-in music streaming aside, the name is smoother around the edges and just a touch more subdued and laid back in comparison, which makes it a great fit for damn near any loudspeaker that can get by on its 40 watts per channel of output. You do get more in terms of features with the name, but you are also paying more for it. If you're more of a traditionalist, the Yamaha is likely going to fit the bill a little bit better than the name, especially if you need more oomph in the power department. As for how the 1200 compares to its own stablemates, the S2200 and 3200, I think the 1200 is the best choice of the three, which is why we requested it. The only real difference between the 2200 and the 1200 is a balanced input, which many of you may not even need. So if that's the case, save your money and go with the 1200, because the two are basically the same apart from that balanced input option.
Now with respect to the 3200, it is more powerful, but really only by about 10 or so watts. The 3200 does give you more balanced inputs with some measure of adjustment over them. But again, if you don't need these things, then the 1200 is going to be the better buy, in my opinion. Sure, the 3200 may be built from slightly more robust components. It may feature an even nicer faceplate with those larger meters. But for me, those cosmetic upgrades do not justify the rather hefty jump in price. Honestly, the 1200's biggest competition or threat has to be Yamaha's own AS801. Now the 801 retails for less than $1,000. It has more power and has more connection options with respect to digital audio inputs, something the 1200 lacks completely. Sure, the 801 doesn't have the 1200's fancy meters, but where it matters most, performance, it could be the better integrated, all things considered. Now, full disclosure, I have not yet demoed the 801, but on paper, it does appear to be the more compelling option. In the end, there is no denying that the Yamaha AS1200 integrated amplifier is fantastic. It looks brilliant, it sounds brilliant, it's just rather brilliant, but it's not perfect. You're definitely paying a premium for its looks, and with respect to connection options, specifically digital audio connectivity, it just has none, which for many, this may be a head scratcher. Not to mention the simple fact that on paper, Yamaha's own AS801 does offer all of these things while still looking pretty sexy in its own right. But if you put a premium on performance and style, the AS1200 may be the sweet spot in Yamaha's lineup. I know Christy and I absolutely love it. So that's it. That is my review of Yamaha's AS1200 integrated amplifier. What did you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. And my question of the day for you is this, which era of Yamaha product would you prefer? Something more vintage or are you into the new hotness over here? Let me know. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy leaves for you down below, know that that is a great way that you guys have all been showing your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us thank you very much. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it. So remember, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. Happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Be well, and we will see you on the next video. Bye. That's the period right there. All right. <laughs> You're a dork. Yeah, I am. What's wrong with it? It just didn't sound good. It sounded great. It didn't. I heard it in my own head. It was fantastic. No. <laughs> Um, okay, I want you to be sure that you say, boy, have I been missing out. I don't like that line, though. Did I write that? <laughs> that doesn't sound like something that I would have written. It sounded pretty good, though, when you said it the first time. Yeah. And whatever you did the second time was trash. Yeah, so. I went to what I would have wrote. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. I... You're a great writer, but I'm a better editor. <laughs>